Okay, so we finally have it. The Android 12 stable update for the Pixel phones. And especially this Pixel 4a, which I've been using as my daily driver since the last 6 months with Android 12 beta. And I've covered most of those on this channel. But for those of you who missed out, well, no worries. This is the video for you. And if you want to know all about the brand new Android 12 on the Pixel 4a, and if you should update your device or not. But before we get to that, please make sure to tap on that subscribe button and press that bell icon if you haven't already. It's free and will keep you updated with all the latest videos from the channel. Now before I get into all the UI features and changes, let's go through the benchmark scores first, shall we? Well on Android 11 on Geekbench, the Pixel 4a used to score 533 on single core and 1505 in the multi-core score. And now after the Android 12 update, the Pixel 4a now scores 515 in single core and 1484 in the multi-core score. Which isn't a big jump or drop, but a slight change in scores has come and I'll keep an eye if something changes in this department. Next up on the Android 2, the device now scores 2,86,000 approximately, which is in line with what we used to get earlier. So on paper things haven't changed much, but we'll have to wait and watch for some days to see how well this device does after Android 12 update. And as I said in my 6 months review of the Pixel 4a, the device still does well for light usage and applications. Though the advantage here is with software, and Android 12 feels quite refreshing now, and the animations and overall UI seems quite nice in usage, as this is one of the first phones to get multi LU theming. So on that note, let's check out all the changes that you will see after updating from Android 11. Starting off with the lock screen itself, we now have the new UI and redesigned theme that is in line with this material LU. And I love the transition from AOD to lock screen, which is again new and so is the AOD clock. The lock screen and clock looks really good and clean as they focus on the essential stuff now. And even the notification UI has changed a lot. So they all look more refined and cleaner visually in overall usage. Next up, if you long press on the home page, we have this new animation and in wallpaper styles, you have this new tabs, wallpaper colors and basic colors. So you can choose from 4 options that are automatically generated as a part of material you theming. And the wallpaper colors as the name suggests are taken from the wallpaper. And basic colors are there just in case you don't like the wallpaper ones. You also get this dark theme toggle right here and that's handy too. Apart from that we have a new themed icon option. So the icons on the home screen and other places will have the same color. So that's a good option just in case you feel like doing it. Overall, the whole material UI theme is in action now for most of the system applications and others are being updated really soon. We also have this new widget picker and a lot of new widgets like the new clock styles, map widgets, calendar, conversations and a lot more, which are not only helpful but are an interesting take on iOS widgets. We also have this new UI in the task manager and it looks a bit cleaner I would say and this app closing animation is also slightly different this time around. The screenshot option has also got some refinements and the animations now look a bit better. After that in the task manager, we have this quick link sharing option for apps like YouTube and Chrome as of now. And this will share the last URL directly to anyone you want. And this is really handy as you won't have to switch between the applications to share a video or a link. And that's a small but a neat feature in my opinion. Also we have the new scrolling screenshot feature just in case you like it. Coming to the notification panel and this is what it looks like now. So totally redesigned and though I appreciate the bigger toggles, I really don't like this brightness toggle at all and especially that stick thing behind it. It looks a bit awkward to me but that's alright I guess. There is also this extra dim option that reduces screen brightness to less than usual and the mobile data tile is also gone now. So it has been merged into internet tile directly and we have one stop controls over the internet access. So that makes it a bit easier to toggle between the things. Also in the notification bar, we now have three different tiles to block the camera, location and microphone access from each and every application. And this one tap kill switch really removes some privacy concerns. Next up, the notification tiles have also changed and they are in these rounded cards which makes them look a bit cleaner with more notifications. And the way they are stacked makes them look really nice and this new notification shade animation looks quite awesome and different too. 
On the top of notification drawer, we have this mic location and camera indicators, just like in iOS. And these tell which permission is being used by which application. And again, a good privacy focused feature. Talking about the privacy controls, we also have a privacy dashboard now that tells about what permission was used and when, and even the sensors and other usage too. And we can block all the access with one single permission page. So that is really handy and a step in right direction by Google. The UI of settings has also changed and is now back to this simple looking one handed theme with a new overscroll animation. And it looks a lot like one UI and we even have this new battery tab along with a new graph indicator. And I like the older one better but that's how it is now. Everything themed as per your wallpaper and accents. Overall the battery charge tab seems like a mixed bag to me. Apart from that we have this new Android system intelligence tab that hosts all the data that your device has learned offline and you can delete that now and control the text suggestions in that keyboard as well. After that the power menu has changed too and looks like this is more reachable and I would say it looks a bit odd as compared to other themed elements or maybe it's just me. We also have this new system wide search bar and this new search bar can basically search for various settings, email IDs, screenshots and much much more and it makes it quite easier to jump between those on the go. So a tiny but useful feature to have. We also have the device control shortcut on the lock screen now which makes it handy if you use tap to pay for Google or other smart home products. Now the next change is with this at a glance widget on the home screen which used to be something like this with the beta 4 and below versions and now it will basically match your lock screen theme. In the smaller changes part well we have this new volume toggle as well which is goodish but again that stick things behind it makes it look a bit awkward. Next up we have this new 100 mode something similar to iOS and this brings whole UI downwards instead of playing with the icons. So you can swipe from top to bottom on this gesture bar and it will enter into this 100 mode. To exit it just simply tap on the empty area or it will do that automatically for you after a few seconds which is also handy. In gestures we have this new long press for power menu or assistant option and that will trigger google assistant when you long press on that power key. We also have redesigned pin and pattern pages and they look decentish and I like the animations here mostly. So this pattern here has this trail now and the pin menu has these new weird animation stuff. That we have some minor changes in the google camera application as well and it has this new version that adapts to material u theme everywhere so it will have the same color in menus and other places too oh wait there is one more thing that i need to share so no new android version is complete without an easter egg right so here is the android 12 easter egg that you can unlock in settings by setting the time to 12 and now in the widgets you will see this color widget that simply covers all the colors that the new theming engine generated as per your wallpaper. And that's pretty much it for the final version of Android 12. So do let me know if you need a full review after a couple of days of usage. And if you do end up liking this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.